So question eight is, um, I, we, we would expect to have a question like this at some point, where we have to do a, a cos x plus b sin x in the form r cos x minus alpha or something like that. So we're doing 3 cos x plus 3 sin x in the form r cos x minus alpha. And I, I would suggest not trying to jump to conclusions with this, but going through it pretty much step by step. So, so from your formula book, that cos a minus b, cos x minus alpha, is r, that would be r cos x cos alpha, and the minus becomes a plus, doesn't it, in that identity? So that's plus r sin x sin alpha. And we are, our job now is to match up the two sides. And it is easier with cos, isn't it, than with sin. Um, sometimes you, it's easy to make a mistake with the sin one. But here we're saying this cos x here and this cos x here match up and must have the same coefficient. So that means that r cos alpha is equal to 3, according to that. And again, we're going to look here. We've got a sin x there and a sin x there. And they must have the same coefficient on both sides. So r sin alpha must also be equal to 3. Actually, in the end, it's, a, it's one where they've been really kind, haven't they? Because you can't really get that wrong. I mean, even if you did get mixed up with drawing it out, you can end up with that anyway by fluking it. Um, so we've got that. Um, in order to find the value of r, we would square and add these two equations using sine squared plus cos squared being 1. And we, we can write that straight away. That's r squared would be 3 squared plus 3 squared. So r squared is 18. So r is root 18. And r must be positive. So we don't need to worry about plus or minus square roots in this case because we've been told that r is positive. We might prefer to write root 18 as 3 root 2. So that's our value of r. And uh, the angle that we want, oh, again, it's worked out relatively easily. Um, if cos alpha now is 3 over 3 root 2, sine alpha is also 3 over 3 root 2. And both of those give us the same thing. But it's 1 over root 2, isn't it, actually? If sine and cos give the same value, then it's, it's 45 degrees, isn't it? So we, we're looking at pi by 4 as our value that we get from that. But, you know, be extra careful. Check it on your calculator. Make sure it's giving you that value that you've not made a mistake on the way. There we go. Um, and it did say, express it in that form. So I'm going to finish off my question by actually doing what I was asked. So that is 3 root 2 cos x minus pi by 4. Great. And that should give us all the marks that we need. Um, next, it said... Oh yeah. Uh, there's a different way you could do that, which is potentially easier. Mm -hmm. You know how uh, on the top line you've got um, three cos x plus three sine x equals r cos x minus alpha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you substitute r in there once you've found it, so three root two, and then uh, substitute x x equals zero, then you'd get three equals. You pretty much jump to the equation you have later on. Okay. So what, having found R? Yeah, have, having found R, substitute x equals zero into the original equation. Which gets rid of the sign and sets okay. the cos x to one. Yeah? Yeah. I'm not sure how much it's gained us. Space, but okay. <laughs> I, I think you have enough space. Right, <laughs> and and time, maybe. Right. What did it ask us for part two? But let's move on with that. Uh, the expression t of x is defined by eight over what we started with. Determine a value for, of x for which t of x is not defined. Well, let's let's write. Let's write out to start with what, what are they talking about here. They're saying t of x is 8 over... Well, it's all part of the same question, isn't it? We're on part 2 of a, um, a question. So it's the fact that we've used 1 and 2 here suggests that this is linked. And look, if we look at that, 
that's the thing that we found up there. So t of x is 8 over 3 root 2 cos x minus pi by 4. Okay. Now when I say find a value for which this is not defined, this would not be defined if we're dividing by 0. That's, that's really what that means, isn't it? As soon as we see a fraction, we're talking about things not being defined, it means we're dividing by 0 somewhere along the line. So we're interested here in when is this bottom line equal to 0. And, and the 3 root 2 doesn't make any difference there, it's the cos, this bit, that must be equal to 0. That means cos x minus pi by 4 equals 0. And uh, if we think about when that, well, it's just asked for any value, so when that's not defined, if you do inverse cos of 0 on the calculator, it gives you pi over 2. As a value, isn't it? That, that's probably the one that you can to give you. So x minus pi by 4 equals pi by 2. So x is 3 pi by 4. Okay. You could have, it's also true at minus pi by 2, isn't it? With cos. So you could have used minus pi by 2 and got minus pi over 4 as another answer, which is not defined. So I don't think it said anything particularly about the range that x could take. So, uh, so there we go. So that, that'll do for that answer. Now, um, but yes, you, you could quite easily have got um, minus pi by 4 and answer that. I'm just checking that they didn't. Oh, I've not got the masking for this one. Right, um, what did it say for part 3? Find the smallest positive value of x satisfying t of 3x equals 8 ninths of root 6, giving your answer in an exact form. Right. Well, actually, first thing is, this is they're just asking us to solve an equation here. They're, just, they're wanting us to set up an equation of some sort. We've got to replace x with 3x in the function, and we've got to put it equal to 8 ninths of root 6. So, that makes us have 8 over 3 root 2 cos 3x minus pi by 4. That's it with 3x replaced. And that's equal to, according to the question, 8 root 6 over 9. Well, this is just about as, uh, as working our way through this. I, I, it feels to me like we ought to get rid of the 8 before we do anything else, because we've got a common factor of 8 on both sides. So let's just divide through by 8. We have 1 there and root 6 over 9 on the other side. Um, it's up to you how you think about this next bit, but it, it strikes me that we could probably take the reciprocal of both sides, just because we're wanting to get x on the top eventually. So let's do that. 3 root 2 cos 3x minus pi over 4 is 9 over root 6. We're, we're aiming to get cos on its own eventually. So um, cos of 3x minus pi over 4 is if we divide by 3 root 2, we've got, what have we got? 3 over root 12. So that's 2 root 3. Is that right? You would probably do it on a calculator. Oh, you could have just three over two for less this. Well, if you do it on your calculator, your calculator will rationalise the denominator. And if you multiply top and bottom by root three there, the threes will cancel out and you get root three over two. That's the new alternative way of writing root three over two that I've been developing. I'm not sure if it will happen. Okay. Um, if we do inverse cos of root 3 over 2, then we get we get um, pi by 3 
No, we don't. We get five by six. We get five by six. Everybody's done it. We do get five by six. And here's the bit where we have to be careful. Because what we're going to do next is we're going to add pi by 4 to this before we divide by 3. Okay? And, and that's fine. That will give us an answer. But the question was really clear in saying, find the smallest positive value of x that satisfies the equation. And we know from our use of the CAS diagram, or graph method, that, uh, that actually, when you do inverse cos of root 3 over 2, pi by 6 isn't the only answer. There are other answers that we get. On a CAS diagram, if you'd done that, you would write pi by 6 there. And you'd also write pi by 6 there, wouldn't you? Because it's where the cos is positive. If you're a, a graph kind of person, you would draw your um, cos graph, and you would say, there's, there's our value of uh, root 3 over 2, giving us a value of pi by 6, and also there it is, minus pi by 6. Now the significant thing here is here, we, because they made such a big deal about saying the smallest positive value of x, that actually, on reading the question, that suggested to me that the obvious value that we ended up with if we just carelessly worked through it, wasn't going to be the smallest positive value of x. Because because if the smallest positive value of x was the obvious answer, why would they have made such a big deal about saying it in the question? So that kind of rang a few alarm bells when we saw that, that we would need to be careful. And, and what we've realised here is that by the time we add pi by 4 to minus pi by 6, that would make it positive, wouldn't it? And so that's the thing to be careful of. So 3x is equal to, if we add pi by 4 to pi by 6, then that is um, 5 pi over 12, I think. And if we do it to minus pi over 6, then that gives us um, pi over 12. Is that right? Have I done that? fraction stuff in my head correctly. So x is 5 pi over 36 or pi by 36 and because the question was saying find the smallest positive value of x, the one that we are looking for is pi by 36 and it, it is quite a small value. That's the exact value that we wanted and uh, that was a bit sneaky wasn't it? Um, I, I wonder how many students, when they did this in 2010, ended up with 5 pi over 6 without thinking about 3 towards the end. There you go. Evo, do you want to do it? Um, that's left. Uh, that was really right. 